This video is going to be instructions on how you can find all of the ordered pairs in the unit circle. Hopefully someday you will have this memorized, but I'm going to show you how you can use special right triangles to figure out what your ordered pairs are. Now, if you don't remember special right triangles, I would definitely encourage you to go back and review those. And if you're not really sure about the unit circle in general, I would encourage you to go back and maybe watch some of my previous videos or figure out what the unit circle even is. So remember the unit circle is centered at zero, zero, which is the origin. I like to start at zero degrees. I like to call that the starting point on my unit circle. If the center of the circle is at zero, zero, and I move over to this point at zero degrees, that would be the ordered pair one comma zero. I like to start with four points to begin with. I think they're the easiest points on the circle. I'm gonna move up to 90 degrees. If I start from the center and I move up to 90 degrees, this would be the ordered pair zero comma one. So I didn't move left or right, but I moved up one. Over at 180 degrees, that would be the point negative one comma zero. And at the bottom at 270, that would be zero negative one. So I like to start with those four points. Now with all of the other angles in our unit circle, we can actually use special right triangles to figure out those ordered pairs. So if I move up to this point at 30 degrees, I've done this in a previous video, what I'm going to do is draw a line connecting that point to the x-axis which forms a special right triangle. This is a special right triangle because this angle inside here is 30 degrees, making this a 30, 60, 90. Now I've already gone over this in another video, so hopefully some of this looks familiar. If I were to move along the base of the triangle, that would be the x value of my ordered pair. If I move up the height of the triangle, that would be the y value of my ordered pair. Well, the base of this triangle is the longer leg of the 30, 60, 90. And in the unit circle, that's always equal to the square root of three over two. If we move up the height, that's the shorter leg. And in the 30, 60, 90 in the unit circle, that's always equal to one half. So that's our ordered pair. Now, if I move over to 45 degrees, I don't have a 30, 60, 90. I have a 45, 45, 90 this time. Now, remember with the 45, 45, 90, your two side lengths, the base and the height, are actually the same length. And in a previous video, we found this before. They're both square root of two over two. If I keep moving counterclockwise, I'm up here at 60 degrees. So I can draw another line and form actually another 30, 60, 90 triangle. This time, the angle inside is 60 degrees and the angle up here is 30. So this time they just switch the square root of three over two and the one half. This time we're only moving to the right, the length of the shorter leg, which would be one half. And then I'm moving up square root of three over two. As long as you know one quadrant on the unit circle, you know them all. There's a lot of reflections in the unit circle. There's a lot of symmetry. The really big thing that you need to remember is what's positive and what's negative. Now remember, this is quadrant one where both X and Y are positive. If I move over here to quadrant two, we're moving to the left and we're moving up. 
So that means your X values are going to be negative and your Y values are going to be positive. So if I start at 120 in quadrant two, you can draw your right triangle and you can visualize how we have another 30, 60, 90 triangle here. This time I'm moving to the left, the distance of the shorter leg, which would be negative one half. And then we're moving up the longer leg. That would be positive square root of three over two. All of the angle measures that end in a five are a lot easier because both the X and Y values are going to contain square root of two over two. The only thing you need to know is what's positive and what's negative. So with my 135 degree angle, I have a 45, 45, 90 again. Because I'm moving to the left, X would be negative square root of two over two. Since I'm moving up, Y would be positive but they're both square root of two over two. And then finally, I've got another 30, 60, 90 here at 150. This time we're moving farther to the left. So that would be the longer leg. That would be negative square root of three over two since we moved to the left. And then we're moving up the shorter leg, which is one half. So I would encourage you to pause the video and finish this remembering that quadrant three, your X's and Y's are both negative, and quadrant four, your X is positive since we're moving to the right, but your Y is negative because we're moving down. So definitely pause the video and finish this, and then I will show you the completed circle when you're done. So, Hopefully you tried this on your own. Go ahead and check your numbers. You can pause if you need to take some time to look at it. And I'm just gonna mention one more thing about your ordered pairs and the unit circle. I have already talked about this before. Your X values are cosine and your Y values are sine. So if you're ever asked for the cosine of an angle on the unit circle, all you need to know is the ordered pair at that angle. For instance, if I ask you for the cosine of 300 degrees, the X value is one half, so the cosine of 300 would be one half. That's all I would be asking for. Let's say I ask you for the sine of 180 degrees. All I'm asking you for is the Y value at 180 degrees, which would be zero.